Good morning, my beautiful people. Good morning, good morning, good morning on this Sunday. I'm your girl, Dr. Shauna Etienne, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Let me bring this camera down a little bit. I'm ready to have great conversation with you all today, this Sunday, because I can see that my previous video has sparked some great conversation with people and some people have responded emotionally. Some people have responded supportively. Some people are in their feelings. Some people may have been triggered, whatever the case is, but it's time that we start having this conversation. So when you come on, say good morning to me so that I can know that you are here. Be so kind to share the video so others can know that I am here. And it's time for us to learn how to break the silence. That, are, that is occurring in some of our black families. I'm talking about the silence of bad behavior. I'm talking about the silence of sexual abuse. I'm talking about the silence of domestic violence. I'm talking about the silence of, of all types of behaviors that are destroying our communities. I'm talking about the silence of drug abuse. I'm talking about the silence that we are keeping in our community that is causing us not to heal and is causing us not to move forward. So that is what I am speaking on today. As I see you guys coming in the chat room, I'm gonna give my shout outs, but make sure you share, share, share the video. If you have not already done so, like, and follow the page just don't follow the page but like the page as well so i see we have Dwayne on good morning Dwayne. how are you my brother hey nate nat turner campbell how are you my brother francois how are you lisa how are you beautiful i'm glad you guys are on who else is this coming on charles brother charles how are you brother Francois says, really like your videos they are very helpful thank you so much francois we're about to have a real conversation we're about to have a real conversation. Hey, Rosaline, how are you? Beautiful Kansas City. Yes, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona last day. I'm going home. I'm excited. Hey, Kimmy Dupree, how are you? Beautiful. Let's have this conversation. So some of you guys are coming in kind of late. So let me just repeat briefly. Hey, LaMonica, how are you? I was talking about my video that I did yesterday when I addressed some bad behaviors that I noticed in uh, an encounter that I had with some seniors, right? And one senior in particular went off the wall like a 10 day alarm clock. And I said that was bad behavior. I removed myself from that situation, right? I told you guys about that two days ago, two days ago. Since doing that video, that video has sparked conversation among many people and I'm very appreciative of it. Some people felt some kind of way about it. Some people didn't agree with me and that is okay. That is okay, but here's a quick update to that video. So I'll have you guys know when I tell you and I teach you about setting boundaries, I'm not telling you guys or I'm not teaching you all something that I don't do myself. And by me setting boundaries, do you know, I went back to that place yesterday. I went back to the place yesterday because I don't have to hold a grudge. When I check somebody, when I put the mirror in your face and I remove myself and it's the, the day goes on, the sun sets and the, the sun comes up the next day, it's over. It's over. So I went back to the situation. I went back there. And do you know I got an apology? Not only did I get an apology, I got an I love you. Not only did I get an I love you, I got that I taught this person. I taught this person a lesson. And what this person said to me, this senior, this senior, what this senior said to me was, you beat me. Listen to the words that was used. You beat me at my own game. You beat me at my own game. Many of them know what they are doing, but they have been able to get away with bad behavior for so long, unchecked, unchecked, until they meet their match. And how they meet their match is when you set your boundaries and you let them know what they cannot, and cannot do to you. So that's what brings me to having this video today because we're gonna break the silence. Since having that video done, I've gotten emails, messages, and even posts right here, right here on Dr. Shauna Etienne. I've even gotten posts with people disclosing the stuff that they have gone through in their families that have hurt them to their core even to this day. We got people 40, 50, 60 years old 
holding on to things that have occurred to them when they were 10, 11, 12, 20 years old. And to this day, they still hold on to it because it hurts. And what disturbs me the most, and I'm not going to be on this video long. I promise you I'm not going to be here long today. But what disturbs me the most is when people say that some things ought to be kept secret. Some things ought to be kept secret. Now, let me provide you guys some information with that. I'm going to give you some information. I teach my children all the time that there are secrets that are okay and secrets that are absolutely bad, even when it pertains to me, their mother. There are secrets that are okay. I'm going to su surprise you for your birthday. I bought your daddy your car. I'm going to give a surprise birthday party, right? We're going on vacation next month, right? Keep it a secret. I got a promotion. Those things are good secrets. Those things are good secrets. Those things are good secrets. But bad secrets that we keep in our community, bad secrets is when it breaks down somebody's psyche, when it damages them emotionally, when it hurts them physically, when it takes away their innocence, when it makes them a victim, when they are an when they are the target of violence and aggression, those are not good secrets. And those are not things that I encourage any one of us to keep in our families. Now, there's a time when we have to mind our business, right? I agree with that. There's a time when we absolutely must mind our business, but not when minding our business hurts somebody else. I want to make that very clear. Not when minding our business hurts someone else. That's not good. Now, here's an example of minding your business. Here's an example of minding your business. Now, if I happen to walk around my house naked, and that's what I enjoy doing, I do not expect anybody to go back who's been in my home who saw me walking around naked to go back to tell other people, oh, Dr. Sharna walks around naked, right? That'd be my business. I'm not harming anybody else. I mean, as long as I'm doing it appropriately and I'm not being, you know what I mean, I'm not harming anybody else. Or if I can't cook, right? Say, I, you know, y'all know I can throw down, but let's say I can't cook and I burn up food, I mess up food, and daddy don't like to eat my food and the kids be waiting for me to turn around or throw my food in the garbage. That's my business. Maybe that should stay in the house. Maybe that's not something we go and we tell everybody about publicly that mommy can't cook, right? That's okay. That's okay. That kind of stuff goes on in your house and it's private. Or if I get into an argument, I get kind of loud, but I'm not, I'm not berating anybody. I'm not calling anybody your effing stupid dummy, your dumb little hoe, your whore, your pimp. If I'm not doing stuff like that, that is critical and damaging to somebody's psyche or critical and damaging in front of children, then that's my business. But here's what we're not going to do. And I tell my children this and I encourage all of you guys to really think about this. I'm not saying that that you should agree with me. I'm saying think about what I'm saying. Now, if grandpa, uncle, brother, cousin, neighbor, friend, boyfriend, husband is touching your child and your child brings it to your attention and you try to hush that up? No, absolutely not. We got to stop keeping those kind of secrets because those secrets, those things do a lot of damage. They, and you know what you also do? Let me tell you what also happens because people, people don't understand this. I've done this work for so many years. I was in child protection services for so many years. And when I had gotten sexual abuse cases, let me tell you what I have uncovered. Getting those kind of cases and interviewing the children and interview, interviewing the siblings or older people in the home, as well as the parents of the kids. What I tend to find out generationally, that sex abuse has been occurring in that family for generations and everybody has hushed it up. Everybody has kept it a secret, swept it under the rug and let it go somewhere else. 
Nobody wants to talk about it because nobody wants anybody to go to jail. Nobody wants their family businesses out there. Nobody wants their children removed and all this other kind of stuff. So they keep those things secrets. Those things are not healthy for anybody and is damn sure not healthy for the black community. It is not health healthy anywhere. You cannot keep those secrets in your family. Cause let me tell you what that does. When somebody has sexually abused you and you was told by your mother, your grandmother, your auntie, your uncle, whomever, the elders, oh my gosh, right? The elders, they're so wise. No, no, baby. Some of them are sick and damaged too. Some of them are sick and damaged too. And when you've been told to keep that a secret, let me tell you what it does to that young child's mindset. It now programs in that child's thinking that it is not to be discussed. And what happened is expected. What happens is what happens to a lot of people and we don't talk about it. This is just what families go through. Don't say anything about it. And as that person grows up and they start making their own parental decisions, oftentimes, not always, but often more times than not, what they start to do with their eyes is when behaviors start to happen with their children that might set their children up to be victims of sexual abuse. You know what happens? Their eyes cannot see it because their brain has been programmed that this behavior is okay. This behavior is acceptable. And so they are unable to protect their children. They are unable to protect their children because their brains has been programmed to believe that it's acceptable. So when the child comes to them and a child discloses that they too have been abused, they too have been molested, they too have been found, fondled, guess what? The ears can't hear it because it brings up so much pain from their past that they in turn sh shushes the child about it and no one ever says anything. That child is made to be, to be looked at as a liar, not to be trusted. Don't bring that baby over my house. Don't bring that child over here. They ain't gonna solve no problems in my family. This is what I hear in so many of our families. And it's sickening. It's sickening and it's damaging. So when I hear people say some things are just left better unsaid, it really bothers me because that is a poisonous mindset. That's just like the slave master coming into your slave quarters, getting on top of your daughter, raping her when she's a ripe age of 13. And you can't say anything about it because you know nothing is going to happen to him. And if you say something, you might lose your life. So instead, you keep it quiet. And this is what I mean when I say that trauma has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And we have no idea where it comes from. Right. Too many of us don't have any idea where this is coming from. That's sick behavior. That's sick behavior. And that is not of our natural culture. That is not of our natural culture. That is not our spirituality. That is not where we are and where we come from. But we're passing things down that we've learned from our ancestors who were enslaved in this country and we're bringing it into our homes with our children and our children's children and the generations keep on doing it. And we are raising up generations of people who have poor mental health. They are angry, they are hurt, they are abused, they are broken, okay? And we are raising up these generations of people and then when they try to express themselves from healing, they are silenced. They are silenced. And most of the time they are silenced from the elders. And I will never tolerate that. Here's another behavior that we keep silent and we must stop making excuses for it. When we have our religious leaders, I don't care if you're a pastor, a preacher, a imam, a rabbi, a priest, 
a spiritual leader. Because we have made these people godlike. We have placed so many of these people up on pedestals that even when we know sick stuff is happening, we choose to sleep it under the rug. I'm going to tell you something that I know of. So I know of a pastor <clears throat> in a church. We'll leave the church name silent. I know of a pastor and I know of this family personally in a church where a young girl, it was all over the news. So I'm not telling nobody secrets. And even if I was, guess what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to warn the people. And it was all over the news. So you can Google it in the Bronx, New York, and a 14 year old spiritual religious leader was I mean, a, 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 a spiritual religious leader was having sex with a 14 or 15 year old girl who was a member at that church having sex. And this pastor or preacher, whatever title he is, wife came home and walked into the home and caught her husband dead in the act, dead in the act. And do you believe when this stuff went public, the pastor was arrested? Oh yeah, baby. I tell you no lies. The pastor was arrested and thrown in jail. And do you know what many of these seniors and church parishioners, whether they're senior or not, did to this young girl? Not only did they tell her that she was to blame, not only did they tell her that she participated in it willingly, not only did they tell her that if she wasn't acting promiscuous, this would not have happened. Not only did they tell her all those toxic, poisonous things, but they told her that she shouldn't say anything. You want him to go to jail? He has a wife and kids. You want him to go to jail for something that you was doing? This happened maybe a year, two years ago in the Bronx. A year, two years ago in the Bronx. And she recanted on her story. And he got out of jail. Caught in the act. Caught in the act. But because, oh no, it's a pastor. We can't put this out there like that. Oh no, it's gonna damage our church. Oh, she was a fast hussy. Oh, she was this. Oh, what does a 14 year old, 15 year old know about being in a relationship with a grown ass man that has a wife and a family? We need to stop doing this kind of crap. We need to stop hushing up the children. We need to stop justifying bad behaviors. Yes, Trinity, the devil is a whole lie. And this person is back in the church, back in the church and the foolish sickness of the people in that church still attend, still attend and still go because their spiritual leader can't do anything wrong. Go on, look it up. Go on and Google it. Go on and Google it. Cause I speak the truth and you know what offends people more than a lie. It is the truth. It is the truth. So we need to stop covering up sexual abuse in our family. We need to stop covering up inappropriate sexual behaviors and encounters in churches among religious and spiritual leaders. We need to stop covering that up as well. We need to stop covering up domestic violence as well. That's another thing I'm going to talk about. People are getting their asses beat and everybody know about it. Everybody know about it and nobody say anything. And why? Because that's their business that goes on in their house. That goes on in their house. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -mm, I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. We're sick. So let me let you know another story about why that's bad. Why that's bad to be ignoring domestic violence when somebody's getting their behind beat in the house. Especially when there are children present. First of all, I told you guys before going on my own and doing my own business, I used to work for the state. 
I was an investigator for the state of New Jersey, investigating abuse, not only in homes, but in facilities. And let me tell you with domestic violence, when children are present, oftentimes, whether it's intentional or by accident, children get hurt. They get hurt. And not only are they physically getting hurt, they are mentally being damaged. And this is what I'm talking about. We're raising up generations of mentally damaged people and no one is calling it out. I'm not going to say nobody. Too many people are ignoring it. Too many people are ignoring it. And we wonder why we see the youth and the young populations in situations that they are in right now. We wonder why we have these children and I call them children and they're 19, 20, 25 years old. I call them children. We wonder why we have generations of people who are sick and they're doing sick things and they're acting out from what our eyes are seeing as violence. They're violent and they are aggressive, aggression, aggressive. You know why they're violent and they are aggressive because they have been made to sit with the trauma that they have experienced in their life. They have been made to sit in silence with the trauma impacting their psyche day in and day out of their lives. They are made to feel like if they say something, they are in the wrong. You keep grown folk business out your mouth. What happens in your house stays in your house. Don't you tell nobody your business. And they are made to be afraid. If you say something, your daddy's going to go to jail and who's going to pay these bills? If you say something, they're going to take you out of your house and they're going to put you to live with some white folks that's going to abuse you. We are made to have these children live in fear while their psyche is being traumatized and they're reliving this trauma over and over and over and over again. And no one is getting these children help. And these children are learning how to deal with their own issues the best they know how and they don't know how. And they're acting out sexually and they're acting out in violence and they're acting out in aggression. And we're blaming the behavior, but we're not examining the psyche. Let me say that again. We are blaming the behavior, but we are not examining the psyche. And when we look at the behavior, we say that's bad. Oh, they're acting out. They lost. Mm, something wrong with that child. Yeah, you're damn right. Something's wrong with that child. What's wrong is your grown ass didn't get that child any help. What's wrong is you're making that child to sit in that trauma and in all that pain and all that suffering. And they don't know how to process those emotions. What's wrong is the time the child was six to the child, the time the child was 16, they were made to sit in that trauma and keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. And now that they're older, they don't know what to do with this anger and they're acting out and we're blaming them. We're blaming them. Well, we really need to be blaming ourselves. Children are coming to you and you're not getting them help. Children are coming to you with the truth and because the truth hurts you, you rather live a lie. You rather live a lie to keep the child's mouth silent. So when we talk about the domestic violence where people getting their behind killed and getting their behind whooped and everybody in the home knows about it. And these children are growing up and they're watching, they're watching their mommies get their behind whooped every single day. What do you think that does to that child's psyche? That is trauma. I cannot imagine waking up in my house fearful every day. In my house that's supposed to bring peace. In my house that's supposed to be sanctuary. In my house where love's supposed to exist. In my house when it's supposed to be teaching and lessons and understanding. And I got to figure out how to survive in my own house. I cannot imagine having a life like that. And we're leaving young children. We're leaving young children to have to deal with that level of violence, with that level of trauma untreated. 
and we are afraid to take them to mental health counseling. We are afraid to take them to a Dr. Shauna or a doctor, whomever else. We are afraid to take them into there because we are afraid for the truth to come out. We are afraid for the truth to be unveiled. So instead, instead we hide it because it's too painful for us to face the truth. But we talk about we need a heal as a community. Oh, we got so much trauma. Everybody want to talk about the trauma that we have gotten from from being descendants of enslaved Africans. We want to talk about that trauma without talking about how we are perpetuating the trauma that our ancestors have learned from being enslaved Africans. You cannot address one without addressing the other. I'm going to say that again. You cannot address the trauma that we have received from our ancestors. That's called vicarious trauma. That is called vicarious trauma. Right? Epigenetic coding. We cannot address what has been passed down to us from our ancestors, slave masters without addressing the behaviors that we're continuing to perpetuate. Everybody want to heal, but they don't want to do the work. That's just like a person who's overweight, who knows that their, their weight is bringing up complications and they know that they have to change their diet and they know they have to exercise, but because Putting away the foods that's killing them is not pleasurable. And because exercising and lifting up weights and walking on a treadmill and squatting and doing everything else that brings pain is not pleasurable. Instead of doing it because they know it will bring them healing, it will bring them good health, it will bring them longevity in their life. Instead of doing it, they avoid it because it's painful. And that's what mental illness looks like. That is what mental illness looks like. Believe it or not, believe it or not. That's what it looks like. That's just like the woman or the man who knows that they keep having unprotected sex with some, with people, various people at different times. They are liable to get an STD or an STI or the dreaded monster called HIV or AIDS. They know that they are subjecting themselves to this behavior, but instead, instead of taking precaution, they continue to do it because it's pleasurable. Because it's pleasurable. Deanna saying are uncomfortable, but guess what Deanna? When something is uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable because it's, bring, it's bringing up pain. Whether it's emotional pain, whether it's physical pain, whether it's spiritual pain, it's bringing up pain. And as human beings, we naturally try to avoid pain. But if you want healing, if you want results, you cannot avoid what's uncomfortable. You cannot avoid what is hurting you emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You can't avoid it. You will never get to healing. If you choose to avoid it, you will choose to avoid the pain. You will choose to avoid the discomfort, whatever we want to call it. We don't want to deal with it because it hurts. So we live a life of denial and we're raising up generations of damaged people. Yes, we got to get back to healing and we got to start calling out bad behaviors as it is. Or what about the substance abuse in parent? What about the substance abuse in parent that their substance abuse have become so bad that their children at times don't eat or they've gone to their neighbor's house to sleep there because it's not safe in their house for the night or people are coming in and out their house at night making them feel uncomfortable and unsafe because their father or their mother has a substance abuse and issue or their guardian, their grandparents, their auntie, their uncle, whoever it is, is on drugs but everyone keeps it a secret while the children suffer in silence. We got to stop keeping secrets in our families. We got to stop keeping these bad ass secrets in our families. Because it's destroying our community. And the minute somebody points it out, the minute somebody brings it to 
the attention. Somebody pulls back the cover and rips it open for the world to see it. That person now becomes the bad person. That is bad behavior. That is bad behavior. You mad at the person who unveiled the truth because they no longer allow you to live in your comfort of lies and deceit and violence and abuse. I'm so sick and tired of seeing people who should be living vibrant lives. They can't go on to live vibrant, product productive lives because they, they, they carrying on someone else's lies or they carry on their pain and their hurt. So they can't live a life that's full of abundance, that's full of joy, that's full of love, that's unrevealing of their goals, that's helping them to, to reach higher levels because they're walking around with so much pain. And every now and then they get into a depression and they feel the pain and they can't get out their beds to do what they have to do in their lives because they've been triggered. Because what they saw on TV, they've been triggered. And they have no one to talk to. They've been triggered because what their child have told them about something that's happening to them. And it has disabled them. They have been triggered because of a smell that remind them of the person that used to climb on them at night and take away their innocence. So now they're in a depression. They can't get out of bed. They've been triggered because of the abuse they were subjected to in their home. And even though they want to go to school, they believe they're too dumb. They're not smart enough. They can't do it. They can't get anything right. So they fall into depression and they sit there in their sad sadness and they can't rise out of it because they have nobody to talk to because they are afraid to talk to somebody because they've been raised in a household that says, shh, don't you talk about nobody else's business. Don't you talk about nobody else's business. Don't talk about nobody else's business when you're the victim. So you can't tell your story because you're so you're so trained and conditioned to protect somebody else's story. <laughs> you got to sit in pain and hurt and despair because you can't damage nobody else. But yet you are the one who's damaged. No, no. I encourage every last one of us to break the silence. I encourage every last one of them, every last one of us to speak our truth because then you'll get free. Now, I'm not telling you to go on a wild, bitter rage because some of y'all get kind of crazy. Y'all be on social media ranting and raving and, and you're still not healed. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get yourself in a group. I'm saying get yourself in counseling. I'm saying to talk to somebody that you trust that can help you to heal. And it doesn't necessarily mean your pastor, right? Because some of us, we just want to take it to the church. <laughs> Woo, we want to take it to the church to untrain people and you be sitting in your misery. And I'm not saying that's everybody. I'm saying that's too many of us. That's what I'm saying. But before you can tell your truth publicly, you have to heal. Because just saying your truth without going through the process of healing is not recovery. It's not recovery. It's not. We have to get our community to a place of healing. And we need to stop telling our children to keep it a secret. I even tell my children, you know, and even I'm working on breaking some of those bad habits, right? Because sometimes I would, I would say to my children, what happens in my house stays in my house. But I changed that up. I changed that up. And I added a caveat to it. And now I say to my children, when it's my business, it's my business and it stays in this house as it's my business. But if it's hurting you, if it's damaging you, if you are at risk and it's not making you feel safe, you have a right to speak your truth. And I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to tell my children that. Because the truth is, I shouldn't be doing anything that would damage them. I shouldn't be doing anything that would hurt them. So I shouldn't be afraid to tell my children to speak their truth. I shouldn't be afraid to do it. But here's the problem that many people have. 
They don't want to say that to their children because they know they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. See, we quick to share videos, right? We quick to pass around a video and share it when we see a racist person uncovered, right? By somebody's camera. Somebody's recording the camera and they get them on blast and then they share it for the world to see and it goes viral. And then that person comes out publicly and they deny that they are racist or they apologize for their bad behavior or they say they didn't mean to do it or they step down and they resign because they don't want to damage anybody's things and it was taken out of content and they make all these excuses for their bad behavior. But if you didn't have bad behavior in the first place, you would not have been caught on camera doing something that was damaging to other people physically, emotionally, spiritually and mentally. It's the same thing when it comes to what happens in our black families. If you are not doing things that are hurtful to other people, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You don't got nothing to worry about anybody putting you on blast. What you going to worry about? But when you live a nasty, demoral life, when you are hurting other people, when you are damaging other people's psyche, when you're living a life that is a lie, and trying to force other people to live your life, your lie through violence and aggression, and your behind gets put in blast, good for you. Good for you, you shouldn't have been doing it anyway. Here was what Stuart is saying, so I'm getting out of here guys, cause you know, y'all got me hot. Stuart is saying, one should always remember that if one feels the need to keep a secret, don't engage in that behavior that manifests it. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Stuart. What else are other people saying? I like to read some of y'all comments. Marilyn the Chef is saying it's destroying the communities, our communities, absolutely. is destroying our communities. And we cannot get ourselves to a place of healing if we're keeping secrets. Rachelle is saying, and many of us walk around like, I'm good. She says, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. We walk around with masks on our face, smiling. We the ones that praise the loudest in church, right? Jumping around. We are we the most religious Muslim in the world, right? The most religious Muslim in the world got all our secrets under our gown. All our secrets under our gowns all our secrets and our prayer cloth. Yeah, you praying that hard because you know you're full of lies. That's why you're praying that hard. The hell is wrong with you? Tony says, I appreciate you. Tony, I love and appreciate you as well. You're like the aunt I never had. I see these things all the time. I'm even experiencing some of these things to a degree. Our people are hurt. Our people are very hurt, Tony. The, our people are very hurt, Tony. So I really do appreciate your, your support. And here's the thing. Too many people that get to my position and we're in a position to help people to heal. We don't want to talk about what the truth is because too many of us are damaged ourselves, right? So we don't want to talk about the pain because we don't want to feel the pain. Absolutely not. And if you want to know the truth, Tony and everybody else who's watching, if you want to know the truth, the reason, let me tell you the reason why I uncover people's ish. Let me tell you why I did it. Because... As a child, I grew up with some of those statements, right? Especially when, when adults, see, I, I've never been a victim of sexual abuse. I've never been a victim of domestic violence. I know people who have. I know people who have. And I was always that one little girl that would call other people out. I'm the one little girl that many people don't want around their kids, right? Because I'm saying, no, you shouldn't let, no, no, say something. You better say something. I got your back. I got your back. That's the kind of little girl we did. You want me to say something? You want me? I'll say it for you. That's the kind of little girl I was. Nobody want their kids around that little bold little girl. Yes, always been bold and courageous. Do you know why? Because the people, and I wrote it in my book, so I'm not telling y'all anything new. My book is out there. You can get it on Amazon. Transforming pain into possibility. You can go ahead and get it on Amazon. Transforming pain into possibility. So I already wrote it in my book. But I've been called some of the most hurtful things by grown folk in my family some nasty things, things that should have damaged my psyche. But if it wasn't for my mother, if it wasn't for my mother's protection, if it wasn't for my mother's love, I would have believed nasty things that have been said 
about me and to me by grown folk in my family that should have loved and protected me. But let me tell you about my mother, Joyce Butler. Let me tell you about her. She go to bat for her kids. And my mother wasn't one to go to family events. She wasn't one. She barely, she barely went to any family events, no holidays. She barely went into nobody else's house. That was my mother. And you know, when I asked her why, Ma, why you don't ever go? Why? She says, I don't want to be around a whole bunch of fake people. And that was the God honest truth. She said, I'd rather be in my house. I don't want to be around a whole bunch of fake people because you know what? She was hurt too as a child. She was hurt too as a child. So may she sleep in peace. And that's why, that's why she took it to the level to protect me and my brother. And they used to always say, people in my family used to always say, nobody can say nothing about Joyce's kids. You're damn right. You couldn't say nothing about Joyce's kids because Joyce would come for the bat. Joyce would come for the bat. And she would tell you, I know my daughter's imperfect. I know my daughter got a mouth and I know my daughter fight. But what my daughter's not going to do is disrespect you unless you disrespect her. She came for the bat. So she gave me my free range. She gave me my free range. And I remember one time when someone was, somebody in my family went to go hit me. You know how they used to like to beat on people's kids, right? Using stringent cords and belts and all other kind of things. And I said to this person, you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. I'm just letting you, I was 15 years old. I will never forget that day in Brooklyn, New York. I said, you hit me, I'm hitting you back. I just want you to know. So get ready, get ready to fight. Yes, I said it to a grown person. You ain't going to put no belt on me. And I flipped out in that house. And I said, everybody in here always think it's okay to beat me. My mother don't beat nobody's kids. You want to turn around and beat me? You beat me, I'm hitting you back. Word up, so get ready. You want to fight, let's bounce. Let's get it. Let's go. Did I get hit that day? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I made a promise from that day going forward. I will never let nobody abuse me and think it's okay. And guess what? I never even received another ass whooping from my mother either. Since that age. Because I'm not playing no games. I'm not, I'm not going to put my hands on nobody's kids. I'm going to put my hands on nobody. And you ain't going to put your hands on me. And you ain't going to put your hands on my kids. Because when you got a result of putting your hands on somebody, that means you lost control of your emotions. And you are not going to be punching on me because I'm not your punching bag. And you're not going to punch on my children because they are not your punching bag. I told you, don't approach me. You never know what's on my person. Don't approach me. Don't approach me and don't approach my kids. Right? Y'all get what I'm saying? So when I tell you things, it's because I too was raised in a family with adults with bad behavior. And nobody wants to talk about these adults' bad behaviors. And they call me and my children bougie. I'll be bougie. I'll be bougie. I'll be all your bougie, all you want. I come through. I come through bougie. That's good. I'm whatever. Whatever. You're not damaging my kids, Psyche. Don't say nothing to my kids, disrespectful. Don't say nothing to me, left field. Because you can't control your emotions because you're damaged. Because you're holding on to the abuse that you, you were subjected to as a child. <laughs> Or from your husband or from your wife and now you want to bring it here no baby we don't do that here you better go get some counsel and help for yourself and i come through smiling and i come through smiling and i dare somebody say something to me i come through smiling and i come through decked out and i dare somebody say something to me because this is not 1998 this ain't 1988 this ain't 1978 I am not a baby anymore. Right? Shoot. But anyway. Somebody said it wasn't. This is what what this is what I didn't want for my children. I lived with that pain until I got help. Absolutely. Many of us, many of us live with pain. Right? Jay said, we are blaming the behavior, but we are not examining the psyche. Oh, yes, that's what I did say, and I believe that. 
I believe that. But I said, you know, it was good talking to you guys. That, that was your Sunday sermon. Tia saying your mother knew the truth and thank God she raised you up in it. Absolutely. Mama ain't playing no games. And you know what, Tia? I never looked at that from my mother as strength. I always thought, oh, you should come around. Everybody's at the family events. Everybody is doing this. Everybody's doing that. Why aren't you doing it? Because I'm always at the family events and my mother's not my mother's not present. My mother's not there. She would send us and she would always tell me before I go, don't let nobody say nothing to you. And don't let nobody talk about your mother. Those are the two things she always used to say to me. Don't let nobody say nothing reckless. Basically reckless. She's a cuss. My mother didn't know how to cuss, but she, she used to cuss a lot. Don't let nobody say out your mouth. That's what I'm going to It didn't go together, but that's how she was. And don't let nobody say about me. You hear me? I said, I know, mom. I got you. I got you. Because she knew I was a fighter. She knew my brother would sit there. My brother would be mad and angry. And then he'll come home and he'll vent. Oh, no, not me. Mm -mm, baby, no, not me. I, I've been the fighter. Up until the day my mother died. Mm -mm. Even when the doctors were trying to get my mother to do things that she ain't want to do. I stepped on the scene because my, my brother's going to talk to them. I ain't talking to nobody. I'll sue your ass in a heartbeat if you play with me. And I'm going to read you everything because I'm going to come with knowledge and experience. I step on the scene. So Joyce Butler knew the child she had, right? Yeah. All right. Last, last comment and then I'm out from Pepper Mary. Pepper Mary is saying some of the older generation, because of what they've been through, absolutely refuse to go in and seek counseling because they think Talking to a counselor is a plague or a stigma, which is untrue. People talk to counselors for many things in this day and age. I'm learning more and more each day that psychology has to do with the mindset and the behavior patterns. In my opinion, it is the, is the number one factor. Absolutely. I agree with you, Pepper Mary. I agree with you. Absolutely. Deanna saying, I'll take bougie for 300. <laughs> yes, baby, right? Yes, baby. I'll take bougie for 300. You just don't put your hands on me. I'll show you how bougie I am. But anyway, let me get out of here on this Sunday. I'm about to get ready for my plane. Go, go scoop my children up. I let them sleep out because, you know, we settled that. We settled that dispute we had the other day in that household, right? We set it out of dispute. We all said, I love you. Gave them heart, hearts, hugs and kisses. And then somebody said to me, wow, I guess it was a change of heart. Wow, I've never seen that senior do that oh yeah because you gotta let people know who they can play with and who they cannot play with seeing or no senior i love you it ain't gonna change how i feel about you i love you i'm always gonna love you but what you're not gonna do is perpetuate generational violence generational aggression and generational trauma onto me or my children you deal with your stuff you go seek some help you deal with your stuff don't put that poison over here don't put that poison over here because I will not allow toxicity. Mm -mm. And that's how I start to talk too, right? I start to get like that. Let me tell you what you're not going to do. That's how I start to get. I get rid because I, I can see when my blood starts to boil and I got to bring it down. I say, let me tell you what you're not going to do. You're not going to disrespect me and you're not going to disrespect my children. If you got stuff going on in your psyche, you need to deal with you, deal with it. But you're not going to deal with it on me or my children. You have a great day. Let me get out this house before I say some things I cannot take back because you got bad behavior. You're mean. You're mean. If you keep that mean behavior going, you're going to find yourself by yourself. And I hope you don't die a lonely person because that behavior is unacceptable, is mean, is nasty, and is damaging. And I feel sorry who was subjected to that behavior under you for years and never said anything to you about it. But me today, I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know it will not be tolerated. Come on, kids, get your shoes. Let's go. And that's why they call me. That's why they call me bougie. Oh, so you gonna take the kids? You gonna take the kids? Get your shoes. Let's go. We don't stay in toxic environments, and this is a toxic home, and we cannot be here. Let's go. Just like that, baby. And I'm out. Got in my car and whipped it out the driveway, smiling. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you all tomorrow when I get back to the East Coast. I'm out of this hot city in Phoenix, Arizona. I am gone deuces. Love you all. Be blessed.